Well, when we got to the end of our Skate Man problem, the company had just decided to add a third skateboard to its product line. And we found out that this caused a problem for us in trying to calculate the maximum profit because when we added a third skateboard, that meant we were going to be adding a third decision variable. And now all of a sudden, in order to graph our constraints, we would need to graph some kind of three-dimensional graph, and we don't know how to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to use Excel, and in particular, we're going to learn how to use a particular Excel plugin called Solver in order to uh, calculate the maximum profit for this particular problem formulation. So if you take a look at the uh, Skateman template, you can see that it's got uh, it's got really three sections here. We've got these two lines here that are going to be our decision variables for our three skateboards. We've got this line here where we're going to put in our objective function, our profit function. And then we've got our constraints down here. We've got four different constraints and we're going to put those in down here. Now if you notice, these three boxes here are grayed out and we're not actually going to put anything in these boxes because this is where Excel is going to, once we, once we start the solver process, this is where Excel is going to put in the values that it comes up with when it solves the problem. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start down here on this line. We want to put in our objective function. And we're going to start in this cell right here. Remember our objective function is 15x1 plus 35x2 plus 20x3. Well, we're going to put those three coefficients into these boxes here. So 15, the coefficient for our, or the, the amount of profit that we make on our sporty board. And 35 is the amount of profit that we make on each fancy board. And 20 is the amount of profit that we make on each pool runner board. Now, if you go over here to this box right here, the box that's that's kind of colored in yellow, that's going to be our profit function. We're going to enter into this box our equation for our total profit. And Excel is going to use this equation. It's going to be trying to maximize this equation. And when I say we're going to put an equation in that box, if you move your cursor up to this bar up here, it's called a formula bar. And the first thing you type is an equal sign. That's an indication to Excel that what you're about to put into this box is not just a single number, but it's actually going to be a formula. And the formula we want to put in is our formula for the profit function. And the way we put that in is we don't actually type it in directly. We type it in using cell values. And in particular, we're going to first type in this cell. I'm going to go down here to the cell with the 15 in it, and I click on it. And notice up here in the formula bar, it puts in the value of that cell location. You see up here it says B8. B8 is the location of this cell. That means it's in column B and row 8. So I'm going to say B8, and then I'm going to say times cell B6. So B8 times B6. Now cell B6, remember that's the actual variable that's the variable x1 so that's going to be the value of the variable x1 that's going to be how many sporty boards we end up making so my formula is 15 times x1 plus 35 times x2 plus 20 times x3 and you can see if you go over and highlight or click on this cell here, cell G8, then you can see that it has put this formula into this cell. All right. So there's my profit equation. I've got that into this cell here, G8. Next, I want to enter in my constraint values. Now, I've got four different constraints, shaping time, trucks, North American maple, and Chinese maple. And similar to how I did up here, where I put the coefficients of each one of my decision variables in these cells here, well, I'm going to put the coefficients of each of my decision variables for each one of my constraint inequalities. So for shaping time, my shaping time constraint is 5x1 plus 15x2 plus 4x3. So I'm going to put 5 in this cell, 15 in this cell, and 4 in this cell. 
and once again in this yellow cell I'm going to put in my formula for this particular constraint. So I'm going to go up to my formula bar, type equals, and the formula for this particular constraint is 5 times x1, or this cell times this cell, plus 15 times x2 plus 4 times x3. And there is my formula that I just typed in for this inequality. Now, I need the rest of the inequality. It's 5x1 plus 15x2 plus 4x3 is less than or equal to 2400. So here's my less than or equal to symbol here. And my value for 2400, I'm going to put into this cell here. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for my other three constraints here. So let's see, for trucks, it's going to be 2x1, 2x2, and 2x3. And my formula is going to be, let me put my equal sign in. My formula is going to be 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 2 times x3. There's my formula for my truck constraint and that value is going to be less than or equal to 700. North American maple veneers constraint, let's see that's going to be 0, 7, and 0. And my formula is going to be equals 0 times x1 plus 7 times x2 plus 0 times x3. So there's that formula. That's going to be less than or equal to 840. And finally, my last constraint, my Chinese maple constraint, those coefficients are 7, 0, and 7. And my formula for this one is 7 times x1, whoops. Oh, I forgot to put my equal sign in. Okay, let me go back and fix this. Get rid of that. Okay. So this value is supposed to be a 7. Okay, I think what I forgot to do is I forgot to put my equal sign in my formula bar. Alright, let's try this again. Equals this cell times this cell, now we got it, plus 0 times x2 plus 7 times x3. And there is my formula for my Chinese maple veneers. And now I also need to put in this value that has to be less than or equal to 1,470. So now I've entered in all of my constraints except for my non-negativity constraints and we're going to put those in uh, on another screen in just a minute. So now I have, it, with the exception of my non-negativity constraints, I have all of my problem formulation entered into my Excel spreadsheet. Now I'm ready to use the solver plugin to solve this problem. In other words, now I'm ready to have Excel tell me based on this problem formulation that I've entered into my spreadsheet, what is the maximum profit that I can get and what is going to be the mix of skateboards that I need to produce in order to get that maximum profit. So in order to bring up the solver plugin, I want to go up here to the data tab at the top of my spreadsheet. I click on data and over here to the right there's a button that says solver. Now you may not have solver installed yet on your version of Excel and if you don't then don't worry we're gonna uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that in class. So 
if you hover over the solver plugin, if you have it installed, it tells you specifically what it is, that little, uh, little pop-up box. It says it's an analysis tool that finds the optimal value of an analysis tool that finds the optimal value of a target cell by changing values in cells used to calculate the target cell. So our target cell is our profit cell. That's the cell that we want to maximize. And Excel is going to change the values in these cells in order to figure out what values in these cells will produce a maximum value for profit. So let's go ahead and click on Solver. And we click on Solver and it brings up this box here. And so here we have to enter our solver parameters. The first one it says set target cell. That's going to be the, the cell that we want to maximize, which in our case is a profit. And so our target cell is going to be cell G8. And I have my cursor in my uh, target cell box. And so I just go over here and I click on cell G8 and it puts that cell into my target cell. All right, so my target cell is G8. I want to maximize the value of my target cell. So I click on the max button here. I want to maximize my target cell by changing which cells. Well, I want to change these three cells right here. So I'm going to click on this first one and then drag over to the third one to select these three cells. And you can see Excel enters the values B6 colon D6. It says these three cells. So it's going to be changing the values in these three cells subject to the constraints and down here is where we're going to enter our constraints. So I've got four constraints and I need to enter those and instead of entering those directly you have to use this add button. You're gonna, we're going to add four constraints. So I click on add to add my first constraint and it brings up this second box here and it says cell reference less than or equal to constraint. My cell reference here is my formula for the shaping time constraint. So that's cell E11 I want it to be less than or equal to the constraint value, which is 2400, or the value in cell G11. Next, I click OK, and you can see it's added that constraint in my constraints box here. Next, I want to add my second constraint. Cell reference is the formula for truck availability. It needs to be less than or equal to the truck availability constraint, which is 700. Click OK, and it's added that second constraint. I want to add a third constraint. My cell reference this time is E13. That value needs to be less than or equal to the constraint for North American maple veneers, which is in cell G13. Click OK, and it adds that constraint. Finally, I want to add my fourth constraint for Chinese maple veneers. That cell E14 needs to be less than or equal to the value in cell G14. And now I have my four constraints added into my solver parameters. Okay, now we're almost ready to click on the solve button. Before we do that, we click on this options button here and make sure that we have our options set correctly. Now, most of these values here, you're going to just leave as the default values. These two values here, these check boxes, you do need to check those. This one that says assume linear model. And finally, this one here that says assume non-negative, that sets the non-negativity constraints. All right, so these are the two non-negativity constraints that we set. Now we click OK, and we're ready to tell Excel to solve our problem. Maximize the value in our target cell by changing the values in these cells subject to these constraints. We click on Solve. and it says solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. I'm going to say keep solver solution. And you can see down here in the profit box, it has found that the maximum profit is going to be $7,840 when we manufacture zero sporty boards, 104 fancy boards, and 210 pool runner boards.